All right, folks, so we've got the 10th and final Democratic Party primary debate before South Carolina and Super Tuesday, and it will be hosted by CBS News, so someone who's fairly more competent than CNN or even MSNBC. But I will say this, if you are a Bernie Sanders supporter, this debate is going to be challenging for us because every single person on that stage knows that they no longer have anything to lose. If you're Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, then you're hanging on for dear life and you've got to throw everything against the wall. And right now, I think a lot of candidates realize, if not all candidates, realize that this is a race between Bernie Sanders and everyone else. So it's going to get ugly. We're going to see some really harsh attacks against Bernie Sanders by Elizabeth Warren. We're going to see Mike Bloomberg and possibly Joe Biden team up against Bernie Sanders. And Bernie's got to come prepared. He's got to be able to deflect. Now, with that being said, I, I'm not willing to say that any one debate alone can fundamentally alter the course or trajectory of the Democratic Party primary. Because even if Theoretically speaking, Bernie went in and had a horrible night. He performed as bad as Bloomberg. Is it really going to matter at this point? The momentum that he has after winning Nevada, it may not matter at all. However, I don't want to, you know, take any chances. We've got to make sure that Bernie Sanders is able to not only deflect but counterpunch because this is going to be a moment where voters are watching and they're going to see or question who's the best to take on a Donald Trump. And looking at these performances, if they see someone like Bernie Sanders, who's able to allow these attacks just, you know, roll off of his shoulders and it doesn't hurt him, this is really going to prove that he is strong and has strength. So the individuals who qualified for this debate include Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Mike Bloomberg, and now Tom Steyer has in fact qualified. Now, look, here's the thing about Tom Steyer. I don't like this idea that someone was able to buy their way onto the, onto the debate stage. Now, we have two billionaires who bought their way onto the debate stage. But strategically speaking, maybe it's not such a bad thing that Tom Steyer is here. Because if Tom Steyer happens to have a good performance, then that bump, like whatever he gains, will be directly Joe Biden's loss. So if he comes out on top of this debate, hypothetically speaking, and he takes away two to three percentage points away from Joe Biden in South Carolina, then that could clear the path for Bernie Sanders' victory. And polls show Bernie's one point behind Joe Biden. So he's hanging on for dear life. He's got to win. This is a must-win state for Joe Biden. So if Tom Stair's presence there, you know, hurts Joe Biden in any way, He's helping Bernie Sanders. So, in a way, it's a good thing that Tom Steyer is there. However, I don't think he's going to be kind to Bernie Sanders. I think he's probably going to be attacking Bernie Sanders as well. But we could see this dynamic where Tom Steyer attacks Mike Bloomberg, the other billionaire who bought his way. Because Tom Steyer, after watching that last debate, he tweeted out that maybe Mike Bloomberg, you know, shouldn't be running in the Democratic Party because this isn't necessarily the right, the perfect party for him. Because, I mean, he's just too conservative. Everyone can see that he is more conservative than the average moderate Democrat. So he's just so out of touch. He's not in lockstep with the party. So if he can do that, then maybe it'll be persuasive. But here's what I think we can expect. When it comes to Joe Biden, obviously he needs momentum. I think what he's going to do is target Bernie Sanders and Tom Steyer. They're both right on his heels in South Carolina. And if he doesn't prevail, then he may be done after Saturday. So he's probably going to go after them. Bernie Sanders doesn't really have to be that aggressive. He needs to focus on combating all of the criticisms and attacks that will be flung his way inevitably. So he's got to be able to anticipate these attacks and respond accordingly. He's got to be, you know, quick on his toes. And I think he can. Like, he's a really good and competent debater. So I'm not really worried about Bernie Sanders. It's just a matter of, like, the volume and loudness of these attacks because he's going to get it from every which way. He is the definitive frontrunner. This is objectively speaking. Like, he's the one to be. So everyone, it's going to be claws out for Bernie. Like they're coming after him. So he's got to be able, and I'm just really, really hoping his campaign preps him because this is possibly going to be brutal if he doesn't come the utmost prepared. Now, Elizabeth Warren, look, it may be too late for her. In fact, I would argue that it's probably too late for her, but obviously she needs a good night and she had a lot of momentum after that debate. 
because she went after Mike Bloomberg. If she can do that again and replicate that success, maybe she doesn't get wiped out on Super Tuesday. Maybe she can stand strong in Massachusetts because if you're not paying attention to the polls, Bernie Sanders may beat her in Massachusetts. So if that happens, that would be just an embarrassment that will live with her throughout the course of her career. So she needs a good performance. I don't think attacking Bernie is the best way to go. Do I believe she's, you know, going to listen to me? Of course not. She's going to attack Bernie most likely. But if she focused on Bloomberg again, then she can she can have more moment, momentum because everyone in the Democratic Party doesn't like Mike Bloomberg. I'm talking about the voters specifically. You know, they see this individual who's trying to buy his way into the White House. This is a threat to democracy. So if Elizabeth Warren stands alone and once again bringing him down, I think that that can demonstrate that she's strong. Now, when it comes to Pete Buttigieg, look, he's got to change his strategy. The attacks on Bernie Sanders aren't working. It's making him less likable. He's coming across as bitter. He needs to just focus on policy. Like, stop being so aggressive. Focus on policy rather than saying what we can't have, what Bernie Sanders is doing is bad in your view. You have to put forward an agenda because whenever Bernie Sanders speaks at these debates, he describes his vision for America and people to judge at every single debate just, you know, talks negatively about the other candidates and says what we can't do, why Bernie Sanders' vision is bad, but he never presents his own alternative vision. And it's because he doesn't have a vision. He's an opportunist. He's an empty slate. You can fill it in with whatever, you know, he thinks is going to help him get elected. If he thinks that becoming a Republican is the best way to the White House, then we'll see him run as a Republican in 2024. This guy is he's just an opportunist. He stands for nothing. So, you know, I, I, he's got to change up the strategy. Will he do that? No. So if I'm Pete Buttigieg, I'm just trying to not come across as a smug asshole. And, you know, I'm trying to be less divisive because I think the writing's on the wall. He's got to see it. He's not doing well. He's not doing well at all. So just try to present yourself as more likable if you want a future in politics on a national level. When it comes to Amy Klobuchar, I think that her best course of action here is to focus on Pete. And, you know, if he's gone, if she can get him to drop out and she could just hang in there a little bit longer, she could possibly absorb some of his voters. But I really don't think anything she does at this point is going to make a difference. I mean, once Pete goes, she's probably going to not not be in this much longer as well. Okay, when it comes to Mike Bloomberg, he cannot have a repeat of last week. He cannot have that bad of a performance Otherwise, even if he's spending all this money, it may not make a difference because if you keep making a fool of yourself on national TV, I mean, people are going to see that you aren't the best to take on Donald Trump. If you can't handle these Democrats on a debate stage, then how are you going to take on Donald Trump? So he has been reportedly prepping for this debate all week. I expect him to be incredibly negative against Bernie Sanders. But if I'm Mike Bloomberg strategically, it actually makes more sense to go after Joe Biden because what you want to do is consolidate that moderate lane. So if all of these moderates keep attacking Bernie Sanders, but they're not coalescing behind one moderate and they're just taking each other out also, then, I mean, you're just, you're helping Bernie Sanders at the end of the day. So Mike Bloomberg, I don't necessarily know what to expect here. I think that, you know, the pressure is on and he knows this. So maybe that can make him even more nervous. Whatever the case may be, he can't have as bad as a performance as he did last time. And, you know, <laughs> the other candidates have all got to once again team up on him because, it's unacceptable for him to be buying democracy. And just putting that aside, putting aside the principle here, he's just a bad candidate. He represents nothing. He vetoed a minimum wage. He banned big gulps. He had stop and frisk. You know, he made it so that way you can't feed the homeless in New York City. This is a bad person. This is an oligarch. So every single person should do what they can to knock him out if they truly want to win because he doesn't have delegates. Now, he's probably going to get a lot on Super Tuesday. But if they do enough to stop his momentum, then maybe someone like Joe Biden or Pete Buttigieg can hang in there. But I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. So you can look forward to my post-debate breakdown the morning after the debate. But I just really, really hope that Bernie Sanders comes prepared and knows what to expect. He's walking into a lion's den. And I said this about the debate before Iowa, but now more so than ever, he's close to locking it up. If he wins South Carolina, then going into Super Tuesday, he may be unstoppable if he's not already unstoppable. So every single person on that stage knows Bernie's the one to beat and he has got to come prepared and acknowledge that 
They're going to do everything in their power to stop his momentum. And that includes his friends like Elizabeth Warren. So he's got to be able to absorb these blows and counterpunch. And I think he can do that. He's competent enough to do that. It's just a matter of, you know, whatever damage is possibly caused, will it be enough to stop him? And overall, I don't necessarily think that that's something we should be concerned with. I think he's still going to do well um, on Super Tuesday possibly win in South Carolina, but it's just a matter of let's not have a disaster of a debate. And if we can avoid a disaster, then I think we're still, we're, you know, we're, we're cruising right along. We're doing okay. So yeah, I'll leave that there. We'll just have to watch and see.